Hi, welcome to the first video in my series on solving simple equations. And what I've got here is a very basic equation, x plus 10 equals 12. And clearly x must be 2, 2 add 10 gives 12. So we'd write the solution as therefore x equals 2. Here's another equation, 2x equals 10. 2 times something gives us 10. It's going to be 5. 2 times 5 is 10. So therefore in this equation x would be equal to 5. Now I've been able to do these two equations just purely by sight. It seems obvious what the answers are. But suppose I took something like this, 3 times something, 3 times x minus 2 divided say by 5. And this would equal, say, the same number, x minus 2. What would x be this time? Well, it's difficult to see what it is. But it is actually x equals 4. You can try it out. It works. Look, 3 times 4 is 12. Take away 2 is 10. And 10 divided by 5 gives us 2. And when I put x is 4 on the right hand side here, 4 take away 2 gives us 2 again. So you can see that it does work, it does satisfy the equation. But the point I'm trying to make is that doing an equation like this is a lot harder than doing these two, where we could just simply see what the solutions were. So what I want to show you is a method that we use in solving equations. A method that's going to make questions like this a lot easier to work out. But in order to do this, what we need to do is to develop a system. And I've got to go back to these basic ones here and show you what that system is, even though we know what the answers are. It is important that we do develop this system. So, I'll take you through this, okay? You might think it's a bit pointless at first, but do bear with me on this. So, let's get rid of x equaling 2 for this one. Now, with equations, what we've got to do is remember one rule, and that is whatever we do to one side of an equation, this is called the left-hand side, we must do to the other side of the equation, this side, the right-hand side. And we can do whatever we like, okay? It doesn't matter as long as we do the same to both sides. Now, what I'm looking at here is that in this equation I have two terms on the left-hand side, the x and the 10. And to get x, what I've got to do is just leave myself with x on the left-hand side. And I can do that by subtracting 10 from both sides. So what I do is I copy down my equation, x plus 10, and it equals 12. But what I do is I subtract 10 now from both sides. And I'm purposely writing this in red, so that you can see I'm writing, doing exactly the same thing to both sides of my original equation. Now when it comes to simplifying the left-hand side here. I've got 10, take away 10, which gives me 0. And x plus 0 is just going to leave me with x. So therefore, what I have here is that x equals 12 take away 10, which is 2. So I've got this additional step in, OK, to help me get x equals 2. 2 add 10 makes the 12. Now, let's try another one. It doesn't have to be x plus a number. It could be x minus a number. OK, so we'll just look at another example. We'll call that one, and we'll go on to number 2. Suppose we had, say, x minus 5. Something take away 5 equals 8. Again, this is so easy, I'm sure you could just guess what it is. It's going to be 13. 13 take away 5 gives 8. But that's not the point. What I want to do is show you that when you get something like this, we've got an x term, we've got a 
constant here and a constant here. What we need to do is get rid of this term here. We copy down the equation, we've got x minus 5 and it equals 8. But to simplify this, to make this just come out at x, what I've got to do is add 5. Add 5 to this side and I must do exactly the same to the other side. Add 5 there. And the reason for this is that minus 5 add 5 is 0 and x plus 0 is just going to leave me with x. So therefore I've got x equals and we've got 8 add 5 which is 13. Okay now you don't have to have the x term on the left hand side of the equals. You could get this equation presented to you the other way around. For instance you could have then 8 equals x minus 5. And what you could do if you wanted to is rewrite this as x minus 5 equals 8. That's up to you. An alternative way though is to just work with it the way it is at the moment and that is we've got our equation we've got therefore 8 equals x minus 5 but what we could do is just simply add 5 now to both sides and if we add 5 to both sides again we've got minus 5 add 5 is 0 x plus 0 leaves us just with the x and what we have here is therefore 13 8 add 5 is 13 equals x. But it's never a good idea when you're doing an equation to leave x on the right hand side of the equals. What we like to do is turn it round. If 13 equals x, therefore x must equal 13. So always finish with x on the left hand side. Now let's go on to 2x equals 10. We saw that the solution was x equals 5. We'll call this equation 3. But what happens if we've got harder questions? So to develop a system for this, what we do, okay, let's get rid of that, is we have our equation, 2x equals 10. Now to get x, it's no good taking away 2. 2x take away 2 does not leave you with x. To get rid of that 2, to leave you with x, what we've got to do is divide both sides by the same thing, and we divide by this 2 here. Okay? 2 times something divided by 2, well those 2's go out, they cancel out, they cancel out once. So that gives me 1x over 1, or just simply x. So what we've got here is therefore x equals 10 divided by 2 which is 5. Alright? So with something like this we get rid of the number in front of the x just simply by dividing. Let's section this off, okay, because otherwise it's just going to run into one another, okay? So we've got that question there and we'll just divide them off like that. Now in my next example, what I want to do is kind of use this idea again, just to demonstrate that with an example like this. We don't have to have the x term on the left-hand side. It can be on the right-hand side. So we might have, say, 15 equals 5x. Clearly, again, you could just see what this answer is. 5 times something gives 15. It's going to be 3. But again, that's not the point with this exercise at the moment. We need to get rid of this 5. And what we do is we take our 15. It equals 5x. To get rid of that 5 there, we need to cancel it out by doing division. We divide both sides by the 5 here, the number in front of that x. And if we do that, 5 into 5 goes once. And it goes once there, leaving me with 1x over 1, or simply x. So what I have got is therefore 15 divided by 5, which is 3, equals x. 
and we've got to finish up with x on the left hand side so therefore x must equal 3. Now we're heading towards working out harder equations okay ones that we're not necessarily going to be able to guess so easily. Now we're not in a position to do this type yet, not in this particular video. I'll gradually take you towards being able to handle these types. But for now what we'll do is we'll just get rid of this. Now we'll look at another example, number five, where we combine both these ideas and these ideas. Something of the form say 5x plus 4 equals 14. An equation with three terms in. Okay? And we've got one x term here and two constants. And what we have to do in questions like this is to remove the terms that aren't x terms first of all. And we've got this constant here. What we need to do is just leave ourselves with 5x on the left hand side. So we need to remove the plus 4 and to do that just like we did here we first of all need to subtract 4 from both sides. So we've got our equation we need to do the same thing to both sides we subtract 4. Okay and if we do that 4 take away 4 gives us 0 so we're just left with the term 5x. So we've got 5x on the left hand side equals 14 take away 4 which is 10. And if we look at this we've got the same kind of equation, the same form as we had here. So our next step in order to remove the 5 here is to divide both sides by 5. We've got 5x equals 10 and we divide this side and this side by exactly the same value of 5. Because that means that 5 into 5 goes 1 and we get 5 into 5 goes 1. 1x one or x divided by 1 is just going to give me the x. So therefore we end up with x equaling 10 divided by 5 which is 2. And you can see it works. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4 gives us 14. In my next example, you might even like to pause the video and have a go at this, but I'm going to turn this around. I've got a constant here equals an x term, 6x minus 7. So basically with this example, I'm trying this kind of reverse effect where my x term is on the right hand side. Should be able to handle it though. It's not much different from doing this one here. So what do we do? Well we've got our equation here 18 equals 6x minus 7 and what I need to do is get rid of this constant first. I do stress that you've got to get rid of this constant first. You can't get rid of the 6. We get rid of the constant minus 7 by adding 7 to both sides. So, I've now got minus 7 add 7, which is 0, leaving me with 6x. 6x plus 0, just 6x. So, on the left-hand side here, I've got 18 add 7, which is 25. And over here, I've just got 6x. So now I've got an equation, a bit like this. Only this time, instead of dividing by the 5 to get rid of that 5, leaving me with x, I've got to divide both sides by 6 so that I can remove that 6 to leave me with x. So let's just write a new line, okay? To do that I divide both sides by 6 leaving me with just the 1x here and x equals 25 divided by 6. Now I purposely picked this one as well to demonstrate and I'll also turn this around at this stage, okay. We've got x equals 25 sixths, 25 divided by 6 goes in 4 whole times with 1 left over. So it must be 1 sixth. Now I've 
Given this is a mixed fraction, rather than using my calculator for 25 divided by 6, because if I did, I end up with a decimal which I'm going to have to generally round up. So working out equations like this, it's a good idea to give the exact answer rather than, say, a rounded up decimal. OK, well, I hope that's given you an idea about how we tackle these equations. Now, I have kept them fairly straightforward in this video. What we've been looking at is that each of the terms, the x terms, in any of these equations has been a positive x term. And what I want to do next is show you how we go about handling equations where the x term is not positive, but it's a negative x term. Okay?